guys, welcome to my recap of Deeper State Keto. If you are new to the channel, my name is Autumn. You can find me on Instagram at Watch Autumn Keto. I do keto meal preps every week. I do a weigh in once a month and I do some random vlogs and other things here and there. Today is all about Deeper State Keto. Deeper State Keto is a 12 week protocol developed by Robert, AKA Keto Savage and Matt and Mega, AKA Keto Connect. And it is a macro tapering program that is supposed to help with overall body recomposition, losing fat and gaining muscle. I did Deeper State Keto from April 23rd, was day one, and the final day was July 21st. So that was a couple of days ago. And I just wanted to give a recap of my results and lessons learned. Okay, so starting off, when I began Deeper State Keto, I weighed 169.8 pounds. I had a body fat percentage of 30.6%. I had a muscle percentage of 69.4, my fat in pounds was 51.9, and my muscle in pounds was 117.9. Okay, so the first thing we wanna get to are the results. How much weight did I end up losing? Drum roll, please. I went back and got a bod pod, and I weighed 156.7. That is an overall loss of 13.1 pounds. My body fat percentage went to 26.4. So that is a 4.2 percentage loss in body fat. That's exciting. Even cooler, of the 13.1 pounds I lost, my fat pounds went from 51.9 to 41.4. So 10 and a half pounds of that was fat and then 2.6 pounds was muscle. Here are my before and after pictures. Overall, I am so pleased with the results, Especially since if you follow me on this channel and or Instagram, you will know that I was unable to follow the plan 100% completely. I did not do every single thing I was supposed to do for all 90 days. I had some stuff come up in the middle. I had a work conference. It was my birthday in there. There were some things that definitely derailed me, but I always got back to the plan as quickly as I could and it yielded me good results even then. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the four main takeaways that I have from the plan. Number one, lower carb equals better feeling. That's just what it comes down to. Uh, one of the big challenges of the plan was that normally on the keto diet, we're used to eating around 20 net carbs. Well. The Deeper State Keto Protocol had you at 10 total carbs the whole time. Up until that point, it was just such a foreign concept for me. I was living off of Atkins bars, occasional Quest bar, dessert sweetened with erythritol. None of that was on the table since you could only have 10 total carbs. Those carbs had to come from vegetables and, and trace carbs found in eggs and cream. You simply could not eat the delicious confections you were used to on Deeper State Keto. And that scared me because I was having one or two Atkins bars a day. Living on that processed food, getting right up to 20 net carbs, uh, and then to have to go to 10 total was crazy. But I made some great substitutions. I became very good friends with sugar-free Jello and Zevia, and it helped me realize that I did not need the Lily's chocolate all the time. I did not need the Quest bars. And overall, it made me feel better. Like I would wake up feeling leaner, less bloated, and I just felt like I was sticking more to the plan. Like I felt truer keto. I know that sounds really dumb. Like deeper, deeper keto, is that the reason? So um, that is something that I am going to keep in mind with me even after the program is 
you know, I thought my first inclination as soon as the program was over to be like, now I'm going back to my Atkins bars. Now I'm gonna eat all my chocolate and all that. But it kind of made me realize that I feel better having those lower carbs. I don't know if I'm talking about 10 <laughs> total carbs a day, but still, you know, the, the cleaner ingredients make you feel better. Number two, and this is a big one. There is a difference between challenging yourself and torturing yourself. Uh, I think one of the reasons I struggled so much in the end really is because my calories were getting so low. Uh, the point of Deeper State Keto is to taper your calories, but it's not to like drive you through this calorie floor that is not sustainable for you. Uh, and I think perhaps if I would have utilized the onboarding phase of this process, it might have been a little easier. Now, I knew that I had to jump right into the process because of some timing things. I knew I was going on vacation, so I wasn't going to be able to be doing the protocol on vacation. So I had to finish by July 21st. So that might have been a reason why I didn't really do onboarding. Uh, also, I didn't think I needed it, but I was wrong. <laughs> uh, generally in the program, I started around 700 calories and at the end got down to around 1200 and that's not where I should be. Uh, if I would have onboarded, onboarding is the process of slowly tapering up your calories, getting your body used to burning more calories so that when you start to taper down, it still gets that effect of a calorie deficit without you having to actually be at a, that great of a calorie deficit. So maybe if I would have started from, you know, maybe 2000 to 1500, ended around 1500, it wouldn't have been that bad, but 1200, it was just, it was torture. It was constantly thinking about food. I forgot, I didn't realize this, but up until this point on keto, I had forgotten what it felt like to be hungry. Isn't that revolutionary? Like I lost over 70 pounds and I did not feel hungry the entire time. And the reason that I realized I did not feel hungry is because on Deeper State Keto, I was hungry. I was like, why is all I can think about food? Where's, I need more food. I would eat a meal and immediately realize that wasn't enough food and immediately be aware of how much more food I wish I was having. And when my calories were getting that low, so was my impulse control. That some of those days were just unscheduled grab and stuff your face fest because at a certain point, I was just tired of feeling hungry. And maybe if I was at 1500 calories instead of 1200 calories, I wouldn't have had that feeling and I would not have taken those actions. Great lesson learned. And if I give this a go again, which I really think I might, that's what I'm gonna to try to do. And who would not love to eat 2000 calories a day and still be able to maintain their weight? I mean, that is heaven for a person of my size. Okay, number three, strength training is important. When you're losing weight, you want it to be fat and you don't want it to be muscle. During the program, I didn't saw myself losing weight and I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, girl, you looking good. But I would also feel myself getting weaker, like actually weaker, whether it was bringing groceries in from the grocery store or you know helping my mom move a piece of furniture i was like i am weak <laughs> like when you lose weight muscle goes along with that so one of the things i really liked about the program is how it emphasized strength training however you have to stick to that part of it i didn't start exercising until phase two like the second month in and that wasn't the problem it was just that toward the end once again, whether I was just hungry or feeling dejected, I was like, I don't wanna lift weights anymore. I just wanna do my dance cardio. And don't get me wrong, cardio is great, cardio is important. But when you're eating at a deficit, strength training is more important to make sure that the weight that you are losing, because if you are eating at a deficit, you will be losing weight. But making sure that that weight you're losing is proper weight, is fat, is, I mean, I don't know, water, whatever, but not your muscle. So I'm still proud of the fact that of the 13 pounds I lost, only two and a half were muscle. But even after this program, it made me realize how at this point in my journey, I wanna to start to put a heavier focus on weightlifting. And item number four, and this is 
something that I didn't even realize and something that I didn't really even have to think about. And that's that it's a lot easier to pat yourself on the back and be kind to yourself and post pictures on Instagram like, oh, out in the gym, killing it. Like when you're actually doing well, it is a lot harder to be nice to yourself when you are failing. And that is something that I didn't really realize until I got toward the end of this program and I was having those failures, I was having those cheat days, I was eating off plan, setting out at the beginning of the day to eat certain foods, but then by the end of it, just stuff in my face. Like, I really felt like, geez, Autumn, you, you can't do anything. You had a plan and you didn't stick to it. Like, you're useless. Why can't you do the thing that you're planning to do? Like, it was really tough to be kind to myself and to say, I mean, this is hard. Like, this is hard and you're doing the best you can and you're not doing 100%, but you're not doing zero. At least you're doing it. And if you messed up today, just do better tomorrow. And it's hard to, to get on the internet and say, hey guys, I'm struggling. I wanna be perfect for myself and for you and to show you that it's possible, but today it just wasn't possible for me. But I still know that I am a worthwhile person and that I have been doing great up to this point and I deserve to feel good about myself and to tell yourself to feel good. Like there was a lot of forgiving myself or meeting myself where I was and just talking to myself and saying, girl, we are struggling. We are struggling hard, but we're here. We did it. We are doing it. And that's all that matters right now. We might not be able to be the best, but we're being better and better is great. Okay, so when it comes down to it, would I do it again? Would I recommend it? Absolutely, 100%. The answer is yes. If you were thinking about doing it, do it. But also know that if you're the type of person that gets down on yourself, if you aren't perfect or if you slip up and make a mistake, you may wanna hold off. I mean, this is a challenge. And if you can meet the challenge 100%, boy, what a feeling that must feel like. Congratulations. But if you can only get 90% or 80% of the way there, you've gotta congratulate yourself for that. And you've gotta be proud of yourself. And you can't focus on the 10 or 20% that you didn't do. And if that's the type of person you are, you know, don't let this get you down. Because like I said, I might have only given it a good 70% but I am over the moon. I am so happy. So if you can have that mindset and if you want to get meticulous with your macros and see how it's affecting your body, absolutely. If you don't like planning, if you don't like keeping track of everything, you might not find value in this particular program. But for me, I loved it. I would do it again. I might do it again when I have a three month stretch of not a lot of stuff going on. Also, I would definitely onboard so I could start at higher calories. My biggest takeaway is that this program is the gift that keeps on giving because yeah, 90 days might be over, but it taught me lessons that I will use moving forward throughout the rest of my weight loss and keto journey. It taught me you can live off 10 total calories. Just give that a go some week. You don't need to torture yourself and figure out how little calories you can eat. That's not the definition of weight loss success. Be smart and put yourself in a good mind frame. It also taught me that I want to start putting heavier focus on weight training. And these are things that I can start to do right now, even after the program is over. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Watch Autumn Keto. You can also leave a comment. Did you do Deeper Stay Keto? How did you do? I want to hear all about it. Are you on the fence about doing it? Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and you can also find me on Instagram at Watch Autumn Keto. Thanks and I'll talk to you guys later.